welcome to the Startup Grind. Okay, uh, good evening everyone and welcome to the Startup Grind event of October 2019. Uh, to start off with, my name is Haider Al Musawi and I'm the co-founder of Sirdab Lab. And the purpose of Sirdab Lab is to help entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs build or grow their businesses. And we conduct, uh, we conduct workshops, training programs, as well as we have a membership program where we provide mentorship and guidance uh, to our members. Now, uh, just to give you a brief about Startup Grind, Startup Grind is actually a global community of local communities where uh, uh, events similar to this are set up for people within the community to get to hear success stories that have grown in the community itself. So if you feel like uh, you don't have what it takes or the environment is not conducive uh, to success, you can actually see living examples amongst us. Now, I want to clarify one thing. A lot of people, even when I invite guests and I ask them to, to come to be interviewed, and I say, you're a, success, uh, you're a success story, they say, no, I'm not a success story. I'm not like Facebook. I'm not like Instagram. But uh, the way we define success is that if you've developed a sustainable business that creates value for your community, then you're a success. That's all it takes, okay? And with us today is a great success story. Um, Alil Mathouk, who's the managing director of Tons. Tons is a, a grocery app where you can buy your groceries at the comfort of your home. Some people call it a lifesaver. So welcome, Ali. Thank you very much. How was yesterday? Okay, okay. Uh, to start off with, uh, and again, what I'd like to emphasize on is that many people want to build businesses, but they sometimes they grapple with their own struggles and doubts. And to start off with, I'd like to know what was your background, uh, career-wise, before starting Tons? If you can set the stage for us, please. Um, to start with, I did my uh, electrical engineering and uh, minor in mathematics uh, back in 2007 uh, at the University of San Diego. So I graduated as an engineer. Okay. Um, I came back afterwards uh, to Kuwait, uh, searching for a job. It was in the middle of the financial crisis. Getting a job, I, I was actually trying to get a job in the United States, which I failed, and I couldn't okay. get a job there. So I came back here, and alhamdulillah, opportunities were, were abundant. So initially, I started working at Wataniya Telecom, Urido today, okay. um, as a NOC engineer, so a Network Operations Center engineer. And uh, I worked in shifts. So two days morning, two days night, two days uh, afternoon, and so on. Mm. And after three months, I, I actually got my dream job at the time, which was an engineer at Zane. So Zane called me up, uh, a person that I uh, admire a lot, uh, Mr. Mundar Lamani called me up and uh, he told me, Ali, we'd like you to join Zane. And, uh, and I joined Zane since then. Uh, throughout my career in Zane, I progressed from a switching engineer and I left uh, last year, uh, approximately, with some hiccups in between, uh, as a core operations uh, department manager, managing the circuit switch, packet switch, and IP networks within Zane. So uh, that's a brief about my career. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's interesting that your, uh, your background is in engineering. Um, did you have a passion for entrepreneurship, or how did you transition to actually running a business? Um, it's, it's basically, it's, it's, it was with us since, since we were kids. Uh, my father is a business owner, my grandfather is a business owner, so they always instilled in us this, this love for business, if you will. We admired the, my grandfather both from both sides a lot. So, uh, and we were always in the, in the co-op business. My, father had, my grandfather has, a, or still have, uh, a good uh, distribution company, a major distribution company in oh. Kuwait. So we used to go back in 2000, 2001 for some internships during this time. So we, we developed a connection to the supermarket business during that time. And uh, we're kind of surrounded by entrepreneurs in the family. So it's kind of, it's kind of like in, inherited in a way, if you will. Okay. You, yeah. you feel comfortable within that environment? Yes. yes. Okay. And uh, when did Tons start and how did you choose to commit to that idea? Uh, th the initial idea was there back in 2011, 2012. I wanted to start something in the e-commerce space with that re that's related to grocery, mm. uh, but I didn't have the financial means at the time, okay? And 
the way it started is we, we acquired along with, our, with some partners back in 2014, January 2014 per se, uh, to be specific. Uh, we acquired the delivery company and we used to like meet every Saturday to, to come up with ways on how we can increase the deliveries. Yeah. And we typically meet on Saturdays, okay? And that's the time when my wife tells me, go pick up the grocery from the supermarket. So it was something, it's a chore that I didn't like to do. And uh, one of the partners said, why don't we just do a grocery application and increase our deliveries and I can get rid of the chore that I have to do every Saturday. Yeah. Okay, so that's where it's, it's, it all started. So we started developing it back then. The, the, the final decision was taken to start TANS was uh, May 2014. Okay. Yes. Uh, so uh, that's a really interesting model because we know it as the scratch your own itch when you uh, experience a problem yourself and then you try to solve it. Uh, but did you have to do any feasibility study? Like what was the planning behind setting up TANS? How, how could you develop your comfort, confidence enough to actually pursue it? Uh, I would lie to you if I tell you if we were that structured. Okay. We weren't that structured. Uh, but we knew that we wanted to do something, and there was a company in the States that was doing it, actually, Instacart. Uh, they started in 2012, and they were growing rapidly. So we just looked at them. We said, we want to do something like that, and then we started scratching the numbers afterwards. So the decision was taken before the numbers scratching started, which is not a good approach, but it, that's the way it was handled. Um, we started very small, and we contracted with a small company, to start an MVP, a thousand KD MVP. Okay. Okay, and uh, we put it into into the market in a very shy way, not no, no problem. And actually, we got we got some good response out of it. Some people were inquiring about it, and that's why we we decided where I think we should we should push forward with that. Idea. Okay. Uh, and were there any competitors at the time? No. There was only a, a direct competitor with this exact business model. No, there weren't. Okay. Yeah. And did competitors come afterwards? There were some com yeah. competitors that came afterwards. Uh, one came that was, early. We, I think we started the idea before them, but we, they, were, they launched before us, and they're okay. not in the market anymore. Uh, and actually, one story that, that's, that's quite interesting is that we did a survey at the time, mm. talking to people whether uh, the, the, they would actually use the service, and we did the survey in SurveyMonkey. Okay. And literally 80% of the respondents said we will not buy online grocery. Okay. So the survey, if, if we were to take the survey results, yes. we wouldn't have started tons. Okay. So it, it's okay. misleading. I think people are not prepared at the time to buy their groceries online. Okay. Um, they, were, they were very familiar with food, but groceries, I think it's something that, that wouldn't... I mean, they, we still get the same comment. People want to check their fruits. They want to check their vegetables. They don't trust your pickers to do the job for them. Okay. okay. So at that time, where online and before the Talabat deal, yeah, this wasn't something that's going to be done easily. So, but we went with our guts, uh, with our guts, and I think we knew at the time that this is a space that will grow eventually with time. Okay. Okay. Uh, but that raises a very interesting point. Uh, when do you listen to your customers and? One shouldn't you listen to your customers? Um, they, uh, they were not our customers at the time. They were just potential users. Okay. I mean, if, if, if I, before the creation of the iPhone, if somebody came to you and he said, do you want this, do you want that? I don't know if you're going to answer it the way iPhone sold the solution for you, you know? Yes. So at the time, I don't think people thought that they will be able to purchase groceries online with the, the quality that they will go themselves and pick up their items. But with time, with online penetration, this became a reality. Yeah. So to answer your question, when do you answer your customers? Uh, when, you do, when do you listen to your customers? If it's a persistent problem that every day people talk about, don't write it down. Okay? This is something that you have to consider. Okay? Yeah. So if you are operational and somebody is consistently telling you the same observation problem. every single time and it's not going away, this is a problem that you have to solve. Yeah. Okay, but if just somebody randomly tells you do this, do that, uh, I think your failure is going to be very near because uh, you cannot satisfy everybody in the world, and everybody has his own opinion. So yes. solve only the problems that are persistently there that do not go away with time, even if you ignore them. Yeah, that's that's a excellent. Uh, and I think 
uh, customers are experts at the problems that they're experiencing. They're not necessarily experts at the solutions that they might be able to propose. Absolutely. Be because they're experts of past behavior, not future behavior. The same applies to, I think, Uber, Airbnb. Like the, the thought of going into the car of a stranger sounds really weird. Airbnb, living in someone's house, sounds really weird. But uh, like, again, survey results wouldn't reveal what people are actually willing to do. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's absolutely true. And uh, so uh, looking at the uh, like, uh, entry of competitors into the market, how does that shape your own stra strategic thinking? Like, how do you incorporate uh, competitors into your own uh, planning? Uh, we had a very tough competitor uh, at some point in time, and I think more, more are coming in the market. Um, we, as a team, we try to stick to our roots, to our competitive edges. Mm. And namely, I think it's, it's primarily design. And what I mean by design is how things work and how things look. These okay. are the two things that we focus on. And I think, I think we have a strong development team that, that has succeeded in, in providing probably one of the best customer experience in our, in our opinion from a UX UI standpoint, mm. from an app perspective. That's the main thing. And the second thing is customer experience because we're in, th we're in the service industry. Yes. So we have to provide the best service repeatedly to our customers. That's, I think, if we focus on our customers, do the best to serve them, I think we will succeed no matter how many competitors come into, into the market. Right. That's, that's the way we see things. And in general, we don't like to, if somebody comes, we just react to it. We have a three, four, five years plan that we think ahead. And changes in the market, we, we, we're going to keep an eye on them, but we're not going to be changing direction because they're coming in. We have our direction, we're going to stick to it, and with some... Uh, or uh, with some dynamism, but we're not going to change significantly because a competitor is coming. So that's, that's the way we see it. Okay. And uh, speaking of your team, uh, who was your first hire? And then how did you actually go on hiring and building your uh, company? Um, the first hire was a, a data entry person. Okay. okay. So, and he left the company. But the first major hire uh, of the business is, is a gentleman named Hamid Al Fadli. Okay. okay. Um, the, the way I met Hamid is uh, I was working at Zain at the time, so I work in the morning, and uh, at night I used to build tons. Mm. And my cousin uh, Hamid Luazan called me up and he said, I, I, "I know a gentleman who who's looking for something to do in the IT realm. Uh, how about you hook him up with Zain?" Mm. I said, "Okay." He's in, within the IT uh, space, and I hooked him up with somebody. Zain, and things didn't work out. I called up Hamid afterward, after knowing that things didn't work out. So I said, we have this venture, and we're looking for somebody to lead the development effort, basically, yeah. and the product development effort. What do you think? And after several meetings, he said, I think I'm going to join. And uh, what, what I looked when, when, when Hamid got on board is I, I wanted somebody motivated, and I found that, this, I found that in Hamid. Okay. Uh, I found and, him. And sorry, how did you find that? What were uh, you looking for? Um, motivation. He wants to do a change in this. Uh, he wants to, do, to make a difference. Okay. okay. Uh, he he wants to be part of a success story that makes a difference in people's lives. Okay. And grocery somehow ap appealed to him. And mm -hmm. I shared what I have in mind. I shared the vision. He bought into the vision, and he was he started with us since the beginning, and he's still he's still around. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. And the higher after that, what what was the approach then, and how did you prioritize who yes. to hire? Initially, we wanted somebody to overlook things. Mm. And when we started development, the second uh, person that joined the company is Ahmed Mazidi. He's sitting here. Oh, yes. And uh, he's, still a, he's also a referral. So I was talking to one of the partners, Yusuf Dashti. And he said, Ali, uh, we're looking for a development guy. Because we, we faced a lot of issues with development companies outside that we outsourced to. And uh, we realized that this development has to be done in-house. You cannot yeah. outsource your core product to people, mm. okay? They will mess with you. They will, if, you delay, if, they will, if you get into payment issues, they will stop the work. You're putting your throat in somebody else's hand. Yeah. And you can't control the customer experience. You can't, yeah. okay? And they abuse you. They're like any, any other contractor. Sorry for the contractors here in, the co in this room, but 
that's that's how it is. The relationship yeah. is very tough. So we decided to bring somebody who's an IT expert or technical expert on board. So I talked to Yusuf. He said, the cousin of my wife has recently graduated from the London School of Economics, at a well-respected school, and he got a computer science degree. Yeah. So I met Ahmed at the time, and I think I met him uh, in Starbucks, Jabriya. Uh, so I shared the vision. I shared what, we have, what we're doing. And he also wanted to make a difference in this in this world by, yeah. by building something that matters. Yeah. And he, he bought into the vision and going, I mean, as a new grad, going into a startup means that you are willing to take risks. Yeah. Okay, and he took this risk. And Ahmed is still around the company, basically. Yes. Okay, so uh, these are the two initial recruits. And what kind of vision were you selling? Because you seem to be very persuasive. Um, the way I see things is hmm. don't sleepwalk through, through life. Uh, you are here for a purpose. You have to find a purpose. Hmm. Okay? And you have to make an impact in people's life. You, want, you don't want to come here, get born, live for 60, 70 years, and nobody remembers you for anything. Hmm. I, I admire people the most who make a difference in people's lives. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to build the best grocery application in the region, and we want to make this a reality. And that's, that's what I'm trying to, to, to get people on board, with all of us, to, to missionaries to, to achieve this. Okay. And then Ahmed came on board as CTO, I'm guessing? He's head of technology right now. Head of technology. Yes. And then all the technology hires went through you or through Ahmed? Um, I have a, a philosophy okay. that once somebody handles a position, he's the one responsible for all the hires. Okay. Because he's the one who's going to be leading the team. Uh, he's going to report to management but he's accountable for his team. He's the one who's going to hire the team. Okay? okay. I'm not going to hire somebody who I think is good and his direct report thinks he's bad. Mm. I'm going to derail him doing his work properly. So whenever we hire a head, the head is the one who, who does the hires. He's the one who motivates the team. He's the one who accomplishes things with the team, not me. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so beyond the technology dimension, uh, did you hire for marketing, sales, um, we, we, took, we took a very gradual approach. Okay. okay, so the first thing Hamid hired as an operations primarily, pri operations and business development director, mm. and then we, we got the technology aspect uh, part of it. As we grew, we knew that we are lacking in stuff. Okay, initially I was doing some marketing when I, when I'm, I'm, I suck in marketing. I don't know anything about marketing. Uh, small efforts here and there. Hamid gives me an idea, I try to execute. We weren't productive. But once, once our sales reached a certain level, we decided that, no, that's a time to, to hire somebody in marketing. Okay. Okay? And we got a cash pandia uh, back in uh, March, and we got Abdullah Atiqi in uh, actually last month. So okay. we have a marketing senior manager right now who's handling marketing, and I'm, I'm delegating everything to the marketing team right now. Okay. Yeah. And you waited until the sales or the your customer base reached a certain threshold before you actually yes. committed to it. We, we are very, f I don't want to say frugal, but we are very cost conscious when it comes to spending our cash. Um, uh, we don't want to be in a position where we don't have cash. Okay, so we're, we're taking a very gradual approach. As our sales increases, we try to add to, our, to the executive management. So today, I think we have a, almost a full executive management team. Okay, we're lacking some parts. Uh, but I think we have a team right now for, that will allow us to grow further. And we're growing at a healthy minimum, I would say, 10% a month. Okay. Okay? So yeah. now we're going to see the team expand rapidly. Uh, so from an executive layer, I think we're almost complete. But now certain divisions require more work, and we're trying to accommodate for their needs as we grow. Okay. Uh, and uh, to support that growth... Um, are you looking to get investing? What, how has the funding uh, process been? Um, it's been uh, it's been tough. Okay, so initially we funded the startup with a couple of thousand KDs. Nothing was there, mm. and then the first round of funding we did internally. It was around fifty thousand KD, fifty sixty thousand KD, and by September two thousand sixteen, we got funding from the Industrial Bank of Kuwait. Okay, and we got around one hundred eighty thousand KD. Okay. at the time. And it took us for a while, uh, and, and we actually started needing cash again after okay. almost a year. So we did a round internally, and family members participated for the most part. 
uh, it took us also for another year until we get a very big strategic partner, which was, the deal was closed in December 2018. Okay. And now we, we have plenty of cash to, 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 to execute for the next two to three years at least. Okay, yeah. okay, excellent. Yeah. Um, and uh, 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 when it comes to your, your company's culture and values, can you give us like a, a sense of what it's like being at Tans? Um, it's a very frugal culture. I mean, we, we, are, we, we try to spend our money very cautiously, but when it comes to a behavioral culture, mm. uh, everybody is willing to speak his mind. Um, there is no sense of superiority in tons. Any person can speak up his mind, and he's, he's allowed to. We, we get into fights. We get into arguments all the time, mm. but we, we encourage that. Okay? Um, I know that everybody participating in any debate that happens in the company is behind, behind like deep in his mind or in his uh, conscious, he wants to support the business. He wants it to succeed. Mm. Okay? And I think this is kind of what got us where we are today, even though it's a moderate success. But I think because we, we entertain or we listen to every single opinion, sometimes we get aggressive with each other, but at the end we come up hopefully with the best solution that I think is possible. We're given the circumstances. So we, we are, everybody is free to speak up their mind, whether small, large, whatever it is. I think that's part of the important part of the culture. Another thing is we are not time restricted. So if you go to our office at 8 a.m., nobody's there. Mm. But if you send a message at 11 p.m., people will respond. Okay. If you send a message at, at, on Friday, people will react. I mean, Hamad Al-Fadli is not, unfortunately not here with us today, but Hamad is right now in the ground solving a problem. Okay. So this is the attitude that we, that we have. Ahmed works all the time. I mean, you can't imagine how these guys operate. Okay. okay. Uh, even though, so it's not a requirement, it's just something that the employees themselves have taken on themselves? Um, the whole team is just driven. Okay. We hire people who are motivated. I don't, I don't have to shout at anybody to get the job done. They will get it done. I know that. Sometimes it takes time, but they will get it done. Okay, mm. they, are, they are internally motivated and driven. And that's what we look when somebody, we recruit somebody. We don't look for somebody who's, who has the right credentials and not motivated internally. We, look, we don't look for expertise only. We look for motivation. Motivation will bring expertise, not the other way around. Okay. Okay, that's the way we see it. Okay. And you mentioned uh, referrals in terms of building the team. Uh, where else do you look for talent? Because that's a huge issue we find in the community. Um, the locals are primarily referrals. So I told you about Hamad, I told you about Ahmed. Abdullah al Atiji used to be my colleague at Zain. And I went to the Promising Leaders program with him. Uh, Akash was part of the Hajri group, which is the, the, the group that joined us recently. Um, from a development perspective, I'm not the best, be, the best person to tell you who's, who, how can we recruit people. Mm. Ahmed probably is. Uh, but what, from my under, what, what I understood, we, we, we have a small office in one of the Eastern European countries, and we, we try to post uh, job posts in some uh, development portals. Okay. And the name Tons, from what I understand, is resonating within this European country. So people know about Tons in this European countries. Oh, okay. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, and uh, up to now, what, what would you consider to be the biggest challenges you faced? Um, cash has been an issue at various stages of the company. Mm. Okay, so that was, fundraising was a challenge at, since the beginning. It wasn't easy. Mm. Okay, so that's one of the main challenges. Uh, the other challenge is managing the growth. Uh, sometimes... You have a marketing issue, you spend on marketing, you rack in operations. You have to spend on operations to catch up. And then you have a excess capacity, you have to cover. Balancing things out has been a challenge and still a challenge, is a challenge today. Mm. Okay? Uh, that's one of the main challenges and the funding was a main challenge. And being, uh, allocating capital was a challenge as well. Should I invest in development today? Or should I spend on marketing? Mm. Or should I expand my, expand my fleet? Balancing all of this is, 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 is a challenge as if you grow at this rate. I mean, last month we grew at 23%. Okay. So, wow. so yeah. I don't know how to, we're going to be managing this growth going forward with the capital allocation. That's a challenge that's been... Okay. That's well, be but do you have a certain decision-making process to help you with this? Or? Um, we see the, the biggest need and so far, and we, we try to 
solve, I mean, spend our, our, allocate our capital to the biggest need and then move on to the next second biggest need. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what do you see as the biggest role of the CEO in the business? Um, first of all, setting hopefully a direction of the business. Mm -hmm. He has to gain the trust of the people who are involved in the business. The team has to know that whoever is in charge is going to come to them if they, if they, ha they get into problems. Um, last year was a very challenging year because we, financially we had some issues. Mm. And literally, I was worrying. I couldn't sleep myself since March 2018 until the end. I couldn't sleep normally. Mm. I'm worrying what's going to happen if we, are, if we run out of cash and I cannot pay these people who are coming every day to work to accomplish this vision. Mm. And I'm the one who brought them on board. What am I going to say to their families if I cannot pay their salaries? Mm. That was a challenge for me, an emotional drag on me. And that was uh, like a real challenge. So I think the role is to do your best to get the salaries paid on time and uh, to keep the morale high if something goes bad. Because setbacks are daily. I mean, today we are dealing with a setback. Mm. Ahmed knows about it. So you have to be consistently solving problems and consistently facing failures and overcoming them to, to succeed. And uh, one of the key challenges of, of somebody who's in charge is not to reflect on the team, and I do a bad job on that. Okay. <laughs> it shows on me. I have probably to train myself better not to, to expose uh, the, the, the challenges the that struggles. I face in the team. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so hopefully that's your, that's, that's your question. Okay. And do you have any like, uh, self-care rituals to uh, like, develop the right mindset to make sure that uh, you have like, the best attitude? Or? Uh, unfortunately not. But, but I try to go to the farm every Friday with my brothers and we, we try to enjoy our time there and not worry about the work. That's, that's my weekly ritual, if okay. you will. Yeah. Uh, and... Uh, uh, so thank you very much for the, all the insights to do with the business. Uh, now I'd like to know your perspective on the startup ecosystem. Yes. Uh, what do you think is going well or things that need improvement in the e ecosystem as a whole? In Kuwait, you mean? In Kuwait, yeah. Um, I think entrepreneurs who want to start a business to, to really think about the, the, the challenge they're getting themselves into. Okay. This is not an easy game. And it's not for everyone. It's a real challenge. And it's, it's, a, it's a, I mean, Steve Jobs said once that people who are rational will quit. Mm. You, you, to a certain point, you have to be irrational to continue with the business. Okay, okay. so yeah. try to know what you're getting into. And the, talking about the ecosystem is that people who are mentoring, uh, other people who are starting business, have not gone through the struggles that a lot of people have gone to establishing businesses. Yeah. I mean, if you are somebody who like, got a quick success uh, in a very short period of time, you're not going to learn as much as somebody who struggled for a very long time to, to, to get to that success, yeah. right? So I, I think failure is a good example and failure is a good uh, school. Mm -hmm. And you need to be mentored by people who went through the struggle, mm -hmm. okay? People who really took it from zero and gradually worked their way up. Yeah. And they faced the struggle that you, that, 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 that you, uh, that you, that you yourself are gonna, is going to face and prepare you for that, mm. okay? And guide you through it. Um, I wish somebody told me that it's normal to have failures. It's normal to set your sales expectation at that point and you get 10% of that. Mm. This is normal. It's normal that you have disasters every other day. It's normal that you have cash issues. This is every startup faces this. Mm. I didn't know that, okay? okay? And uh, uh, one, one book that I read that resonated with everything, and it's, it's the best mentor that, I, that I've seen, is a, a book called The Hard Thing About Hard Things, okay. okay? This book is written by Ben Horowitz. Ben Horowitz is a, a founder of one IT company that I can't recall the name of. However, he's a co-founder and partner right now with Horowitz Ben Andreessen, which is uh, probably the best uh, venture capital in, in, the, in Silicon Valley. Mm. Okay. Ben, in his book, really explains the journey. Mm. And there is one cheat. He's, he calls it the struggle. And every single le line in this uh, page, I'm sorry, we've been through it in tons. Mm. He's speaking to, to us. 
Okay, and th that's what I don't see here, unfortunately, in the in the in the mentoring system, the ecosystem that's there. Okay. So if I were to add something to the uh, ecosystem here, is try to bring people who really been through the journey, okay. really struggled to reach where they are today, and this will this will be the best add-on to the who, to aspiring entrepreneurs coming to to the ecosystem. And that's that's I think the most thing that I, I okay. Would like. And uh, so you emphasized on the mentorship aspect. Are there any other forms of support that you feel uh, entrepreneurs would need to actually build their businesses? Um, mentorship, I think, is number one. Uh, funding, the right funding, is number two. Okay. Okay. Uh, for example, we got funding from IBK, and I, I think I told you about that. The fund, the way it's structured, it's not for startups in the tech field. It's structured maybe for asset. Heavy business. We're not an asset heavy business. Okay. Okay. We depend on talent more. And Ahmed knows the struggles we've been through to, to make things work. So I think every business model has its different funding requirements. And I think I don't think we should look at a, a place where one size fits all. This should not be the situation. We should look at every different industry and try to get the best funding for this industry with the right mentors. So this is something very important to, so, I mean, to increase the chances of success for entrepreneurs. Okay, uh, like uh, knowing who to uh, pursue for investment, like no. or funding. The the funding mechanism. Okay. Okay. So if you are if you are a, a tech uh, startup, I don't expect eighty percent of your assets to be real assets. A physical. Physical uh, assets. Yes. No. You'll get some part of it. You'll recruit some people to do your development. You need cash actually more than you, you need assets. Okay. Okay. So this is required more. And in order to, to make sure that the cash is not spent fast, uh, put a funding schedule and let the entrepreneur uh, get the funding on, on tranches rather than giving it all at once. Maybe he's inexperienced. He can spend it uh, very fast. Yeah. So the, 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 the cash inflow within, within in the business, the funding schedule has to be done and there should be proper planning for what the cash is going to be spent on so that they don't get all the funds all at once and it's gone because they probably a lot of them lack experience okay, yeah. in managing money. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I heard that tip from an investor. He said, uh, no matter how much money you raise, you will spend it all. So sometimes you spend a lot of money foolishly because it's a lot of money. Exactly. And okay. throwing money, we, we did that before. Okay. Throwing money at a problem is not going to solve the problem. Mm. It's not going to solve it. Yeah. Actually, the solutions are in the, the, the brain power that you will put into the problem rather than throwing money at the problem. That's what we faced in general. Okay. Uh, I'm going to open it up for Q&A in a bit. I just want to know, uh, what are your recommendations? So you mentioned the book, The Hard Thing, uh, the hard thing About Hard Things. Yes. Uh, are there any other resources you'd recommend? I mean, I, I, I like to read. Okay. And I'd like to share my, the books that I read primarily with my brothers. Uh, I, I can only recommend primarily books, okay? The, okay? the rest is you have to do the job to learn, okay? okay? Um, a few good books that I, that I recommend highly is one of them I already mentioned. The Lean Startup. Okay. Okay. Um, good to Great. Okay. Okay. Uh, Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. Okay. The founder of Nike. And uh, the last one would be uh, the High Growth Handbook. Okay. The High Growth Handbook. How to s uh, grow the company from one to 10,000 employees. Okay. Okay. These are th the five resources that I would like, highly recommend for somebody who's starting a business. And s during the stages of the business, whatever I read in these books, I'm facing it today. Okay. These people have done it. They have solid experience. And it's like mentoring. Okay. I have I, Phil Knight is my mentor. The, the Nike founder is my mentor through his book. Yeah. Okay. And if you read this book, you, you know the journey. But you will you will know how relevant it is once you experience it. If if, if you understand like, what I'm like to say. Uh, the advice actually triggers once it matches exactly. up with your experience. Exactly. Okay. Excellent. Yes. Um, other resources you ask me about tools how to manage the business. I mean sometimes we use Trello. Uh, Ahmed is a big. Uh, uh, fan of Jira, I believe. They, ba they manage all development with Jira. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I can recommend right now. But other than that, we use Google. 
uh, Google Drive, Google Calendar, stuff like that. Nothing major, but that's what we use, basically. Okay, excellent. Uh, final question from me. Uh, what do you see is the future of TANS? What's the plan right now? Um, I, I can't give you something solid. I mean, we don't know where. Mm. I mean, it's business in the business world right now you, you see that people or companies at some point became giants two years after they're just going out of yes. business right yeah. um, I, I can't predict what the, what the future is of tons but uh, what I hope to achieve with the team is we make it uh, a company that's respected in the industry within the grocery industry a company that's known for exceptional customer service and exceptional user experience in design. That's that's what I can tell you. Okay. And hopefully on a regional level. Okay. Th that's that's all I can tell you. Excellent. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. Okay. And now we'd like to take questions from the fine audience. Uh, is there? Yeah. At the front. Yeah. Hello, Haider. Hello, Mr. Ali. <laughs> Um, when I realized Mr. Ali was coming to talk about TANS today, I really had to come. Um, for me, TANS was a lifesaver. Um, I was facing uh, some issues hiring a driver, and also I didn't have a maid in the house to help me. And um, I had too many chores to do, like uh, how he was saying about the chore, and I had too many chores to do. And uh, I saw the ads for tons in the grocery store near the aisle. And I'm like, okay, so this is my, my co-op has, uh, you know, taken on this um, online uh, grocery. I have to try it. And now I'm a regular customer. I like order two times per week oh, thank you very from, much. from tons. You know, I, يعني, I can't live without it. One of the main services that I rely on. Now, and it was a lifesaver. It saved me. It's to this day because I can't do all the chores, um, um, you know, without uh, that much support. So it's been really great. Now, um, probably you've learned a lot from me as a customer because uh, at first the shoppers were um, maybe their English was not that great or um, um, I had issues with them, but now it's become very consistent. It's improved a lot. And now it's just a regular service that I can rely on. Now my question is, regarding the shoppers, is there any plans in the future to maybe like Uberize it and open it up to, um, um, you know, like maybe uh, uh, local citizens who want to like have the time maybe to shop? Maybe I don't have time to shop, but maybe other people do have the time to shop. So is the, would it be opened up like that to um, anyone who can maybe like uh, help out in the shopping? And that way we can like develop uh, the community also. Um, because uh, sometimes I kind of worry about um, uh, companies if they rely too much on expats, if uh, in the future we might lose that experience rather than maybe, Yani, I worry, to be honest with you, in, in the future, will someone know how to do my grocery? So um, I kind of worry about that. And I see a lot of young um, uh, youth who do have a lot of energy. So I'm wondering, would you like think about Uberizing it in the future sort of thing? Um, I mean, to start with, we, we thought about it uh, to, to make it like an uh, Uber experience. One of the major issues that we, we not struggled with, but we were afraid of, is uh, delivering the right customer experience. Um, it's, it's done elsewhere in the world. Um, and when it comes to the expat community, we try to hire the creme de la creme today and to, to, to deliver the right experience to people. Uh, are there plans today? No, we don't have a plan today. Is it something that we will entertain if, if we do it right? Definitely. Uh, I would love to do it this way. But we, we're, we're concerned a lot about the customer experience. And actually, I'm, I'm not aware enough of, of the Kuwaiti community if they're willing to do the, the job as, as something serious. Because if you do crowdsourcing, you need a big pool of participants to maintain uh, the, the service uh, availability to your clients. Um, it's a challenging question. I don't know if we if we can uh, do it, but it's something definitely that we would like to explore. Uh, but when, if we decide to do it, 
we need to make sure that it's done properly because it will hurt our image as a company. Well, I hope that you do, uh, if you do it, that, or if you don't, that you maintain the customer experience in terms of good communication because at first, I, we really struggled with the shoppers in terms of communication. They didn't know how to speak <coughs> Arabic. They didn't know how to speak English. So it was a big struggle at first, but now you've somehow managed it. So I'm really happy for you for that. Uh, thank you very much. Actually, a lot of credit goes to Hamad al-Fadli because of that. Uh, what initially we started very small, so we didn't know the game, honestly. We were learning on the go, in all honesty. Uh, but as time passes on, we, we learn from our experiences and we try to improve upon them. You reminded me, um, uh, Hamad is great. I've, He's helped me out with some problems, especially when the oh, shopper. So you, you know him personally. Right? Yeah, yeah, I have his number. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm I'm a regular customer, so yes. I've faced a lot of issues, especially in Ramadan. <laughs> I faced a lot of issue when I'm tired, and I guess the shoppers are tired also. So Hamad is the one who usually solves that. So I, you you know, he's he's really great. I mean, uh, thank you for that. I mean, we appreciate uh, your uh, your comments, and we try we're going to try to improve as we go along. Thank you. Okay? Thank you. Over the, no, actually, I don't have a question. If you can just mention the books again. Uh, the, hard, the hard thing about hard things. Uh, the Lean Startup. Uh, good to Great. Uh, shoe Dog. The High Growth Handbook. Thank you. Did you get it? Yeah. Thank okay. you. Yeah, I know your company is giving... Uh, yeah, uh, you're coming giving a good quality uh, products and, uh, and service to their customers. Are you planning to expand your business to the other GCC countries? Um, as a plan, yes, uh, definitely it's, it's, it's in the plan. Uh, but I cannot provide, unfortunately, timelines for that. Uh, but we're definitely considering it. And it's going to be primarily focused on the GCC. We're not going to go elsewhere to, uh, these days. That's so we're planning only in the GCC. Okay, okay. thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to commend you, uh, Ali, for, for uh, coming up and speaking about tons. Um, I actually uh, would like to dive into uh, uh, a space where I think Haider did not dive into, which is the uh, operational part. So can you, can you tell us, like, do you guys have your own fleet or basically are you outsourcing your, your uh, uh, cars? That's uh, one question. Uh, I think uh, one of the audience uh, as well mentioned uh, crowdsourcing. Yes. Um, is, is crowdsourcing actually uh, a model that is applicable for such business? Uh, I think, uh, I think uh, the, the experience of getting people to shop for other people is a very, very uh, feasible option, uh, I find it very, very good for my experience as well because uh, I, I wouldn't want to struggle with, uh, with translation and with uh, uh, the choice of goods that I want to uh, actually uh, get to my, to my household unless uh, the, the people who are shopping it to me are people who know uh, my taste, being Arabs, being Kuwaitis possibly. So these are two questions. Okay, so regarding the first question, you're going to regarding operations, all our shoppers are ours. Okay, so they're under uh, our uh, company. Along uh, with the cars, no. with the vehicles? The cars, no. We, we have some portion that's outsourced and some portion that is handled by us. So is Tons is a technology company or how do you classify it? Or Tons, a logistics Tons, company? Tons is a technology company. Excellent. We don't want to be classified as a, as, a, as a logistics company because it's a lot of people are getting into this game and I think our main differentiation is technology and that's what we invested the most funds on. We're a technology company. Absolutely. Okay. And regarding the crowdsourcing, uh, it's, it's, it's a definitely a viable model. It worked elsewhere. But as of today, I don't think we, we don't want to get something out there that we're not sure of in terms of quality and customer experience. Is it viable? It is definitely viable. Have we figured out a way to make it good for our customers? Not yet. 
um, uh, is an option of getting interns to do it, basically. People who hunt for experience. Anybody let's say who, 18 any, years old people, 20 any years old people. Any intern who is willing to, go as a, to come in as a shopper, he's welcome to join. Do you have an opening for interns? On your sure. website, give us a call. <laughs> definitely, <laughs> any intern who's willing. If that's available, it. then yeah, uh, definitely. It yeah. is available. If you have interns, please send them over. I'll give you my contacts. Please send them over. We're, we're going to be more than happy to get them. Fair enough. All right, Thanks. I'm done. Okay, thank you. There's one at the front. Hello. Uh, thank you, Ali, for uh, your uh, pleasure. Insightful. Uh, pitch I mean it's it's uh, you're in the marketplace and what I think is interesting is how did you get uh, the co-ops uh, to engage right. uh, that's that's because um, I've, I've attempted something similar in the health industry mm -hmm. uh, I also struggled with uh, the entry of data who takes ownership so these are two different questions I mean, do you, do you actually update the system yourself or do you rely on them doing it? And what kind of convincing it took to get them on board? Um, let's talk. Okay. I have follow-up questions, but I'm... Okay, uh, how did we get the co-ops on board? It's primarily connections, okay, to start with. Um, we started with Mishrif. One of the team members has... Uh, a strong uh, presence in Mishrif, and we talked to the to the board of Mishrif, and we, we convinced them to join. Um, and that happened with others as well. The Kuwait is a very connection-based society. You have to get some connections to get your, your work done. Uh, however, uh, as time passes on, we're getting approached by co-ops right now. Okay, so the first few were a struggle, but now people are approaching us to, to be listed on tons. And we, uh, literally, I have four or we have four or five uh, co-ops that are interested to join TANS right now because of the good feedback that they're hearing from their peers, okay? So that's, hopefully that answers the first, the first question. Uh, the second question, who owns the data? We own the data. Uh, do we get the data from them? No, we just get the pricing and the SKUs, uh, the, the barcodes, the product information, and we update the data ourselves. Okay, okay? so that's, that's uh, the situation right now. However, some companies are tr like, are going back and forth who owns the data, but as we speak, we, we are in discussion with one of those companies right now. But we believe that we should own the data. Okay, and that, that's, Thank you. that's the key asset that you have okay. as a technology company. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Ali, for mentioning the most interesting things about the challenge you have met. And uh, my questions are about the investment. Uh, what are the things that attracted the investors about your business? And the second thing, um, how can you attract the right investors to your business, especially when you need a specific amount of fund, as you have a plan? But some investors, as you know, they don't want to be the only people to dance on the floor. Thank you. Wow, that's a very tough question. <laughs> okay. Um, how did, did we attract investors? Um, I mean, initially I said, I told you, we, we raised things internally and then we brought family. And, uh, my family is very supportive and other team members in the team, their families are very supportive. So they, they supported us from the beginning. The challenge was when t once we tried to bring a, an institutional investor and we knocked a lot of doors, okay? And some people did approach us, uh, big institutions. It wasn't an easy sell, uh, but we shared our plans and the, the, the key trigger were two things, according to the investor himself. Um, the names of the people involved, I mean, they told us that your name in the market is clean, uh, we know that you guys are serious, and uh, people who want to do something. And the second thing is, when they saw the technology, they were impressed by the work that's done. Okay, that's what got the strategic investor on board. Um, that's, that's what I can tell you. If you show them a good product and a good plan, and the team members are good, chances are you might get something. Okay, so I, I know it's a simple answer, but it's easier said than done. <laughs> no, it's enough for me, thank you. Okay. Hello, this is Sami. Thanks to Sirdar Lab and Mr. Ali. Uh, I, know I also have a question about investment. Uh, you said IBK. 
So is it like a debt financing or they take some stake from the uh, tons? Okay. And also, I have one more question. After yes. you mention these things, I make a Google search, but there's not a lot of, I mean, there's no information about tons in like a media, news. Uh, that lack of media things, why is that? I mean, it's not tons problem probably, maybe about Kuwait, and I am also new in country. Uh, I am working at MBK, and the, my first question about the IBK, <laughs> okay. uh, focus on that. I mean, okay. Uh, regarding your first question, IBK, <coughs> they have a small uh, SME program to fund startups, okay? And it's, it's a loan uh, that they give you. They give you 80% and you have to fund 20%, okay? And you pay it over a period of uh, eight years. So two years is a grace period and then you start paying on a quarterly basis. Uh, initially, I thought it was just a loan. But when the strategic investor came in, I, reala I realized that it's a partnership. Okay, and we decided to buy them out during that time because we could not get the strategic investor to invest if we don't buy out IBK. So we arranged the money somehow and we bought them out. So that was another issue that uh, I think <coughs> incubate or fundraisers in, in Kuwait has to think of. If the startups is growing and there is strategic partners coming in, allow them to come in. That's a sign of success, it's not a sign of failure. So, if, if encourage that, in fact. So, if you are a fund, if you are a come entity uh, lending these small startups, if a, a huge entity comes in wanting to invest, allow them to. This will actually secure your investment and make the prospects better for the business. Okay. So, hopefully, that answers your question. The second question is uh, the, the the media aspect. Um, we don't seek media attention. Okay. And that's kind of the character of the business right now, okay? We, our main focus is to get the business right and the customer experience right as much as we can. And I think by doing that, our customers will talk and then we'll get media attention. I will not go and seek media attention just for the sake of media attention, you know? Um, we want to focus our clients and our service and our growth and things will be taken care of eventually, okay? So that, that's the way we see it. Thank you so much. Hello, uh, I hope you and everyone present here are doing well. So thank you for the speech though. Thank you. I have two questions. Uh, first one might be a bit personal, but I need to know like, uh, have you done your education uh, something similar to the field you are in now? Like what, what's your education? And yeah. uh, do you think like it counts or it relates to your current business, your education? And uh, okay. secondly, I would like to know like how long did it take you? Uh, I'm sorry, I missed the earlier part maybe. I need to know, like, how long did it take you to reach at this level, which you are at now, like the whole journey, the struggle, including and everything, so, okay. from a startup, like, how many months uh, or years did it take you? Yeah. Uh, regarding the education question, uh, my professors will kill me if I say <laughs> that, but uh, I'll, I'll just an answer it honestly. Yeah. Uh, I did electrical engineering, and uh, whatever I studied in, in electrical engineering, it, though it was hard, it's not applicable to what I'm doing right now, yeah. okay? But it taught me some things. Uh, in, in our opinion, uh, in my opinion actually, personal opinion, education taught me four primary things. Um, problem solving skills, uh, time management, uh, communication skills, hopefully I'm doing a good job today, uh, and stress management. These are the skills that I got out of college. I don't think solving an electrical circuit or designing an amplifier or anything is helping me in any way, shape, or form in tons. But these skills that you gain in college is gonna help you through life if you use them correctly. So that hopefully answers the first question. Uh, so do you, did you graduate in Kuwait or do you study? No, University, University of San Diego, California. Oh, okay, that's great, okay. Okay, yeah. uh, and, sorry, can you remind me of the second question, please? Yeah, how long did it take you to complete uh, the journey? The whole we, day, we, completed, yeah. we completed five years. Five years, much We completed, today we completed five years. Since the coming up of the idea, today is five years and five, four months, five. approximately. I wish you good luck in the future. Oh, thank you very yeah. much, appreciate Here's it. The person in front of you, please. No, no, in front, yeah. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Feroz, and first I'd like to basically congratulate you uh, on the startup and I see that you are highly grounded 
very transparent in speaking and I hope uh, I don't get into trouble for this. Uh, <laughs> no, you're speaking from the heart and you're uh, honestly speaking and you're still very passionate but your passion is quite controlled. I can sense that out of from uh, you. Uh, my question is that uh, you have clarified that it is a technology startup and you don't want to get into logistics so that is your focus is quite clear. Your challenge for funding and the way techno companies get funded here and the distinguishing between physical assets and intellectual property assets because you cannot see anything. And you said that you need mentoring. I mean, we should get mentoring from the people who have really gone through the journey. Now, you having faced all the difficulties, what you will uh, suggest or advise for the IT companies or IT startups, how should they plan f to get funded? To raise money, basically. To raise money. Uh, if are you starting from zero or do you have something working? We have something working, yeah. Uh, basically, my role uh, is also of a consultant. So I have a lot of people who uh, come in and they have a similar challenge the way uh, you have mentioned. So okay. uh, problem is that my problem and which I've seen with other people is that yes. they are mentored by the people who are reading from the books. So this divide is there. So how can we bridge it? The, I mean, if, if, you are, if you are working and you have healthy growth levels, um, I, I would, first of all, I would focus on the, on the team. So if I were to pitch to an investor, I have to focus on the team. The investor has to meet the team and know their capabilities, their passions, what they're, what they're after, and their vision. That's, I think, money will follow, but if you have a good team, if they're passionate, and they, they're missionaries, you will get funding somehow. That's, that's the core thing. The team is, is the core thing. So next is uh, your growth projection, or not projection, your, your history and projection. So if you see healthy growth levels with minimum amounts, this will, this will encourage potential investor to jump in. But if, you see, if they see mediocre health growth, uh, I mean growth rates, they will be discouraged. So try to work on your team, present them in the best way possible. They have to be really in it, and not all part-time, as they have to be sacrificing something, okay? Uh, our team sacrificed a lot, so they have to be sacrificing something. And uh, your product has to show you, your team's capability. If you have the right product, the right growth rates, and the right team, I think you will be able to get something. So that's, I mean, it's, I know it's simple, but it's harder than, than you think when it gets to implementation. So that's, that's my simple answer to this question. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, this, uh, Justin? Yeah, the yeah. Okay. And then... Uh, hi, uh, I have three questions, just quick straightforward questions. So, uh, First one, uh, when to be rational and when you have to be irrational. I remember you said that, you had that little point that stood up question, I'm curious about that. So that's one question. Another question, how do you pick your products? So I know like when you already have, I'm assuming, you know I don't like to assume but I'm assuming, uh, if you, when you put your products available on your app. So uh, obviously with time, based on customer preferences, it will develop, right? But in the beginning when you started, how did you pick your products? How did you pick, I want this, I want to sell this and this, and you're not gonna go and sell the whole aisle in the Jamia, or you have to pick in the beginning, right? So how did that start off? The third question, how do you manage the, we said something about uh, customers, in the beginning, people didn't really shop online and stuff like that, and customers had trouble. They like to go and hand pick their fruits and their vegetables and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm, I, I downloaded your app, I think it was last night or this morning, after I saw the thing, and I registered. So I just had a brief look. A lot of the products were packaged, so I understand that the packaged food is not, you don't need to really have a good eye to pick your fruits, because it's packaged, it's ready. Yes. But in the sense of, other people that don't want to buy package, they want to have fresh fruits or fresh vegetables or fresh, I don't know what. How do you, as uh, um, tons, do you, how do you manage the quality of pickers picking the products? Okay. Um, regarding the first question, when to be rational, when to be irrational, 
I mean, try to be most of the time rational with all your decisions. But when to become irrational is when you have a belief. And, and when, when there's a lot of people depending on your decisions. Uh, for example, like at some point in time, we were literally going to go and bust. Okay? And rationality will tell you, start packing. You're good? Close down. But we had a lot of people in this company, I'd, I'd, we didn't want to fail them. Okay, so we became irrational and we, we tried to our best to make things work. And I had a second plan. So rationality will tell you, close shop. Okay. But irrationality will tell you, go ahead. A lot of people are with you on this boat. You cannot give up. So, you have to push. So gut feeling is a thing. Belief. Belief, okay. Belief and Belief. dependency on others. Uh, a lot of people are depending on, on your decisions. You don't want to let them down. So that's where irrationality, I think, sometimes come in. Uh, so, I, yeah, probably that's, that's, that's my answer to this question. The second question is, uh, we didn't do a good job, I think, in the, in the early selection of the products. We did it aisle by aisle. Okay. Okay, so, which is, which is not a smart move. Uh, what, what we saw is, we wanted to literally take every single product on the shelf and take a picture of it ourselves. We want to project this quality. In terms, there is no picture that's bad. None. Okay, why? Because we literally picture, took a photo of 35,000 SKU. Okay. Ourselves. Mm. Gradually. So we picked it aisle by aisle, but we tried to uh, cover as much as we can from the co-op perspective. We didn't take literally all the aisles. We, th we took what we thought is the best products that we sell. And we keep adding to it, and we have a feature that's within the app that asks the customer to suggest products for us. So that's the answer for the, for the second question. Sorry, I have a bad memory. What's, what's the third question? I forgot also, just a second. Sorry. <laughs> uh, how did you manage... Oh, yeah. How, how did the you manage the quality of picking groceries? Yes. In terms uh, of the, uh, the, the The way the operations team set it up is they train the shoppers to pick the best produce, and we have a, a compensation plan where they're incentivized to pick the best produce. Okay. Okay. Uh, however, a produce selection is very subjective. For example, I will choose a yellow banana. Some other person wants a semi-yellow banana. I, I don't know. Okay. So we have a, a comment section within each uh, produce product that you can insert your comments on it. So if you like a yellow banana, you can tell us we like a yellow banana. We'll choose a yellow banana for you. If not, we'll choose a green. One. Yeah. You know. So based on your Comments will we'll ask you about that. Okay, does that, say, does that answer your question? Okay. All right, thanks. Okay, uh, where's the mic? Sorry, uh, Jess Mundik? Yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, at the front? Okay, or at the back and then at the front. Sorry, but they didn't. You want, you want to keep me to the last or what? Okay. <laughs> the best for last. <laughs> yeah, I know. I had that feeling. Uh, welcome, Ali, and thank you for joining us here. Actually, I want to ask you two questions. One more, like, regarding the theory. You know, you, the definition of a technology um, um, startup in terms of investment. Uh, you mentioned, I mean, I came a little bit late, but as I came, you were just talking about, you know, um, uh, the, the funding, the investment, and being a technology, you don't have assets. So is it true, my understanding, that a technology company uh, main cost uh, factor is uh, the people? You mentioned developers and marketing, and you invest in marketing, then you need to catch up with development, and then you invest in development, then you need to catch up in marketing, you know? So is my understanding correct that for a technology company, these are the two things which, are, which matter most? So that's the theory. And uh, the second question is regarding the operation now. Let's go from the theory to the, to the, to the practicality. Uh, in the ecosystem in Kuwait, how you manage to get good developers and good marketers? you know, to, to, to hire them. So how, how did you come over that? Because that's actually the biggest, the biggest challenge I'm facing today. And, you know, like I can write a book about outsourcing outside of Kuwait. Okay, maybe I will do one day. Uh, it, it's a nightmare, right? And in Kuwait, I am not getting f to find these really two segments, you know? So I would like to hear your point, uh, point of view of this. Okay, regarding your first uh, question, uh, a technology company, does it depend on people? Absolutely. Okay, uh, the great majority of our budget went to development. The great majority of our budget will go to development eventually. 
so yes, your 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 developers are your probably the your best asset. Okay, your most important asset. Uh, and marketing, yeah, probably comes second as you will. And operation is actually very critical in our stage as well. Okay, so but the bulk of your work to grow is going to be in development because you need to keep your edge against your competitors. You you should be always evolving your technology so that others won't catch up. Okay, sometimes we hold back on others due to growth issues, but uh, all in all, yes, development is going to be the, the primary investment in this, so in this business. In your case, it is all insourced, so there is, you are not outsourcing. Initially, we started outsource, and okay. we faced a lot of issues, contractor issues. You know them very well, Munir, I know. right? We, we, I, am, we, I am just about to cancel a contract today, so yeah. tell me about it. We faced it with you a long time ago, as well, yeah. right? Uh, so yes, uh, we, we believe that we cannot uh, keep our necks or our uh, fates with the hands of others. So we decided to, to do everything in-house eventually. Uh, now, the second question, how do you get your, your talent? We didn't get any talent from Kuwait, unfortunately. Uh, other than Ahmed, everybody is outside, outside of Kuwait. However, there are tons of employees. So we have an office in Eastern Europe, a tons of office in Eastern Europe. And they are under our payroll, they are our employees. Does, okay. does, does that make can, sense? Uh, can you explain it a little bit more? So we have an office in Eastern Europe. Okay. Okay, and there's a, a physical office. And our developers work from there. And they are our developers. They are not outsourced. They are our full-time developers. Okay, and they work with Ahmed to get the technology rolling. Okay. And, and uh, what about marketing? I mean, Mar I, I understand you are not so far now, but what about marketing? Marketing is uh, in-house. And uh, we recently hired, uh, we, we got one person, uh, Kash Pandya, who joined us in March 2018, 2019. And we recently got uh, Abdullah al Atiqi, uh, who joined us last month. So it's handled in-house and it's outsourced to some marketing agencies locally. Because marketing, I think it has to be local. Yeah. Uh, the people know the language, they know the customers better than outside <coughs> agencies. So you have to, keep, I think you have to keep your marketing local. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, sorry. Uh, sorry, can we take this question and then you Thank you for the time. Uh, I'm very glad to be here today. I have a very small question. Uh, as you know, there is competitors and there will be more competitors. So I wish you all the best for you and for your teams. My question is, uh, how can you make your client satisfied and happy with the, regarding the, the, the new competitors or the big competitors in Kuwait? How can you make your client satisfied and happy? That's a small question, big answer, by the way. <laughs> She's a client, isn't she? Um, he's right, it's, it's, it's not an easy, it's not a question with an easy answer, but, um, and I'm not saying that we're doing everything perfectly. I mean, we're far from perfect. But in my humble opinion, if, if you do, if you promise your customers and deliver to the promise consistently over time, the customer should be happy. Okay, so don't promise them something that you cannot deliver uh, and try to, pick, to, when it comes to produce and items that we pick, try to pick the best for your customer consistently. So if consistency over time, build, build trusts. And that's what we're, we're striving to do. I'm not saying we're perfect, we're far from perfect, but that's what we're striving to do. So just consistency with our promises and delivery over time. That's all I can say. Okay, thank you. And then, sorry, in the middle. <coughs> uh, your company is uh, growing great. Eventually, you will have uh, investors. Now, how do you choose your investor? Investor, because some of, some of the, do you do you like them to be sleeping partners, or do you do you like the investors to be involved in the business? Because some of the, some investors they might put some problems. For your business, they will you will tell this. They said no, we like that. Especially when they are investing a lot of money. How do you choose your investor? Did you refuse some of them, even they have going to invest with a lot of money? Uh, in the past few weeks, we refused uh, one already. Okay, and the reason, is, the first thing that we look for investors is number one is alignment of vision. We have to know that he's whoever the investor is, he's, he's, he's aligned with our vision with what we're trying to do, okay? If he's not aligned, then 
don't invest in the company because we spent all this effort with this direction. Don't try to shift into another direction that we don't know what's going to happen unless the team is aligned with you. So that's number one. Number two is reputation. Uh, if if we don't want to get into like we don't want to get investors who are who have a bad reputation, who will hurt us eventually. Okay. So reputation is a, is a very key aspect of, of choosing an investor. And do we want silent or active? So far, uh, alhamdulillah, the investor that we have is active and they, they've been phenomenal in our growth, in our support. So yes, we do, have, we do want active investors. We want to, in, in strategic, strategic investors. We want people who we will learn from and add value to the company rather than somebody who's just going to give us money and stay at home. So that's... Is it wrong to somebody invest with money and it will be a civic partner? Um, is it wrong? It's not wrong. However, we, we don't know everything. Okay, so at different stages in the business, we're facing new challenges. So the strategic investor today is have more expertise in some areas that, that helped us grow. I don't know where we're going to be in a year or two, but whoever is going to come in later on, he should be somebody who's going to add value, who will direct us to the to the right things that needs to be done, that the, the, the challenge that we haven't faced and we don't know how to handle, okay? So we want somebody to tell us how to handle things rather than us try, trying to figure it out and we'll lose a lot of time and money trying to do that. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, my question um, is about what are the best ways to evaluate your startup? You know, since you are starting at the beginning, you don't know the amount that you need for your startup and you don't know uh, how much 1% from your startup would be evaluated by. So what are the best ways to evaluate your startup? Are you a financial person? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm co-founder and operations director of uh, Second Startup and uh, driver operations director for Garib Company. Quite. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, that's another very difficult question. Uh, because it's very subjective, okay? Some people t t tell you, yes, do a discounted cash flow model based on sales projections or net asset values. It's, don't, we don't have assets. This wouldn't work probably. Uh, but. And, and some people will tell you just multiply your sales by 12 and you have a factor by 6 to 7 to 8. To, to be honest, I, I don't really know what the best way is, okay? And I'm not a financial person. Um, we evaluated the, 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 the business based on the potential, okay? So we put our projections. We thought this is the fair value based on our mm -hmm. factual, like fantasy, basically. And we threw the numbers and it comes down to negotiation. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll be lying to you if I tell you, oh, this is the formula to evaluate the, this business. It doesn't work this way. Uh, mm -hmm. some, there are some uh, methods that are done uh, globally, but when you talk to people in Kuwait, the mindset is completely different. <laughs> they will say, what is, what is your net profit? How much are you going to give me in dividends? It's, it's just different. So you can do this stuff, come up with an approximate number, and have a markup on these numbers based, based on the message that you're going to do, whether it's discounted cash flow or uh, multiple of sales or whatever. And okay. the, the, at the end, it's going to come down to negotiation. How good of a negotiator you are and how well you sell the dream to others. That's, that's, that's what I face so far. I'm serious. Okay. Uh, my second, I'm sorry, my second question about uh, your startup. When did you reach the break-even point? Um, we're not break-even yet. Okay. And intentionally so. Okay? So if we want to reach break even, we can reach it. But I have to cut a lot of expenses that will hinder our growth. Okay? okay? So we don't want to reach break even. That's not our intention. Our intention is to grow the business. And to grow, you have to spend. Yeah. yeah All right? Yeah. Uh, I think it's, it's too early of a stage to, to hold up on capital expenditures and uh, OPEX. Uh, to, to, to gain the money. Uh, I, I think it's too early. We have to grow at, at a sizable level before doing that, and we're not there yet. But uh, we're trying to maintain a, b a healthy burn rate so that our cash lasts for a, for a good portion of time. Okay. That answers your question. Uh, yeah, I got you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, okay, thank you. So, uh, last two questions here, and then Asif, sorry for the delay. Sure. Hello. Uh, I would like to understand how did you go about uh, phasing your product, like 
we were talking about MVP, right? Like, what do you say is MVP? For example, uh, at the checkout stage, uh, let's say I want to only have cash on delivery. You can ignore Knet or the other payment options. So, how do you define your M MVP? Like, uh, the the first website that we've done wasn't functional much, to be honest, but it just gave us leads. Okay, uh, the first tons of MVP was a huge project. Okay. Uh, going backward, if, if I go in time, I would make it a little bit less. If you are able to do something presentable where people can check out easily and providing a decent experience, this is MVP, okay, with the minimum cost possible, okay. Um, you just have to be able to sell uh, your product to customers with a decent experience. Don't be too fancy, all right. That's kind of an MVP. <coughs> it has to be. Something that's working, but not exceptionally working. That will cost you hundreds of thousands of KD. Okay? Is, it, is there a right, a right formula for it? I can't tell you a formula. But it has to be something with a reasonable budget that people will be willing to check out um, from. And you will be able to generate some sales with people relatively happy with the experience. If you see it working, then push further. Invest further. Okay? Um, we started at a, a high level. I think it was a mistake, uh, and because it, it, it did give us, it got us into financial issues. Uh, if I go back uh, in time, I will lower the investment, make it work, and then pump more into it as time goes on. That's that's what I would do going backward. Does that answer your yeah, question? Sure. Sure. Uh, just to add on to that, like uh, at the point when you were launching your app, what were your key strategies to sort of onboard more users or customers or clients, like? That's actually an embarrassing question for me because I didn't have a strategy. Uh, we just like we just had an idea that we would like to develop the best app. We put all our money into uh, the, the 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 technology, and we went to market. We realized that we we don't really have a, a good plan. However, what we arranged with the co-op is we wanted to do in-store marketing, and that's kind of kick-started our growth. Okay, so we did. The, 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 the cashier's uh, stickers, and it started getting us users. And with time, I realized that whatever we spent on development, we had to have the same amount ready for marketing and operations. And that's a mistake that I've done, okay? Don't just spend on something and ignore others. You need to, to have a healthy business, you have to spread your budget correctly. Have capital allocation on uh, development, operations, marketing, and have a buffer, because unpleasant surprises will happen. <laughs> the worst that you think is not going to happen, it, will, it might happen. You have to be prepared for that. Sure. Does that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Hi. Question at the back. From the launch day until today. Yes. Okay. At which area did you start with? What do you mean? I'm assuming that when you started, you didn't target the whole country. Yeah. You had specific areas in mind. Which were those areas? And now I assume you cater to the whole country. So how many months it took you from that first three months or six months in business yes. to where you are today? Uh, we actually we started with almost the whole country, okay, from Mishrif, which is it. It was done not for operational reasons. Operationally, you will be definitely losing, but it was done for uh, sales reasons. If we start with a very condensed area, a very focused area, your reach is going to be limited. Okay, so we wanted to get as much customers as possible, so we did target most of Kuwait from day one. And as we're growing and adding co-ops, we're trying to limit our zones to improve operational efficiency. So we considered it as a marketing cost, okay, because I don't want to spend on marketing and somebody downloads the app and we cannot deliver it to him. What's the point? I lost the marketing money, right? So we did it backward. Is it the right approach? I don't know. Did it work? Relatively speaking, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, Pleasure. Okay, and then the last question, if we can go. That was the last one. This is the last, last one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Final, final, you know. Thank you. Uh, Assalamu Um Excellent. My initial question was uh, about the biggest challenges you were facing. But I think you know from the, all the questions, you kind of uh, already tackled them. 
which I'll just try to, you know, uh, repeat them. So you mentioned funding, the budget, um, user growth, and customer satisfaction and business being your top priority. So if you could just rephrase again, what is your, you know, uh, main challenges that you actually, it's, you know, you're facing in order for you to capitalize uh, for Tons to be the number one app in Kuwait. Um, and along with that, I wanted to say, you know, um, Kuwait being one of the major, uh, I mean, one of the countries where the food culture is, uh, you know, majority dependent on, uh, you know, um, the restaurants, because we know how Courage and uh, Talabat is doing. So we know from breakfast to dinner, uh, most people, you know, like to experience and enjoy uh, either dining in or just getting the food delivered to home. So how are you tackling this issue of making the movement from ordering food to, you know, ordering food to your home and just, you know, cooking at home, if that makes sense, you know. Because Kuwait is actually one of the food capitals of the world with so many restaurants available and, you know, different experiences. Thank you. Okay. So the first question is just, you want us to recap uh, on what, what are the challenges to grow tons to be a leader in Kuwait. Um, the first thing is, I mean, as I said, the, the getting the right team on board and trying to deliver the best experience to our clients. Okay, that's the number one. And hopefully delivering the right experience consistently over time and deliver to our promise. Another thing is, I think we have to keep the innovation alive within the business. Um, our development team is constantly looking at various ways to improve the customer experience end-to-end, -end, the whole system. So this is, I think, something that's going to keep us on the edge. Uh, and as, as a managing director, I think one of the key roles internally that I need to try to make tons an attractive uh, talent acquisition environment for, for our prospective employees because the team is... The, the thing that will make you or break you. So hopefully we can make Tanz a very attractive place for people to work in and attract the best talents in Kuwait. Regarding the second question. So just to stop you there, so in terms of that, what are the you know, you know, uh, up-to-date technologies that you're actually using uh, to keep Tanz on, you know, uh, on top? And have you considered VR or AR uh, as an option to allow you know, users as a premium option or something to uh, you know, have the live experience. Maybe some user might like to, you know, enjoy the live experience of shopping, you know, and this could also potentially tackle the, uh, you know, problems that a lot of the people have here mentioned that, you know, uh, you know, of having not the best experience and so, you know, they could be choosing the green apples or white apples or, I mean, sorry, not white apples, but, you know. Uh, when it comes to the latest technology, I'm not the right person to ask, to be honest. Uh, Ahmed is. Uh, some things he can share, some things may, he might not be able to share. Uh, VR, AR, uh, I'll, I'll, I, I cannot comment on that, to be honest. Okay, so uh, interesting questions, but very confidential issues that I, unfortunately I cannot share. Uh, regarding the, your, your previous question, uh, regarding uh, carriage and Talabat, I, I see grocery and food delivery are two different things. Uh, food delivery is somebody who's looking for a meal, he wants to eat right now. But groceries doesn't cover only food. Uh, it covers your shampoos, your cleaning supplies, your, it covers your... Uh, sometimes if, you, if we get into the high market business, some other devices that you order. And I can guarantee you, nobody's going to stop buying cleaning supplies. Nobody's going to stop buying soap. Nobody's going to bu stop buying vegetables from the... From the a supermarket. So these things will not disappear whether carriage sells food or not. I mean, it's just part of the human nature. Uh, so we're not worried about that. These are two different things. And whether people cook at home or not, I think people pass through certain stages in their lives as they age. Uh, when you are in college, maybe you order more from outside because you're, you're always gathering with your friends, you want to have a good meal, so on and so forth. As you start developing a family, uh, you have a house to clean, you have maids in the home, you have your kids' diapers that I'm ordering all the time. Uh, so you have different things that you order. So grocery is going to stay there. It's not going to 
it's not going to disappear. That, so that's that's my answer to that. Thank you. Pleasure. Okay. Uh, sorry, the time's up for questions. If you want, if you have any more questions, you can approach uh, Ali afterwards. Uh, Ali, thank you very much for all Pleasure. the uh, insights. Thank you thank for inviting me. Uh, and I'd also like to thank our payments partner, Tap Payments. If you're looking to start a business and you want to handle payments, uh, Tap, I can't recommend them enough. I actually use them for a very personal uh, project of mine. And it feels great, like getting um, uh, text messages that you've made money. So if you want to, to pursue that, I'd highly recommend them. Uh, the Startup Grind events are actually supported by KFAS, the Kuwait Foundation for the Advancement of Sciences. And I'd like to thank them for their support as well. Uh, and uh, finally, I'd like to thank you all for showing up. And thank you, Adi, again. Uh, mm -hmm. for your answers. Pleasure. Um, also, uh, we have desserts at the back, and I hear that it tastes delicious. So can you please try it out and just confirm if it's delicious or not? <laughs> okay? Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.